Welcome to this Windows channel and this is another look into settings in Windows 10. Now let's take a look at all settings and devices. First tab on the left which is printers and scanners. So printers and scanners says it all but it has a few things that people often are a little uh, surprised and wonder why it is there. So the first option at the top, add a printer or a scanner. You'll click this after you connected your printer, for example, on a USB port, or if your printer is on the network and you're trying to attach the printer to your computer. Uh, you'll click this. This will have an automatic process where it's going to search for any printers or scanners that have not been installed yet that are on the network or connected, like I said, through a USB port. Now there's another place where you can do that and I'll show you a little later. Then you've got printers and scanners. That's the list of everything that's installed that you can print to. Now you're wondering, okay, um, why is there all of that including my printers or I don't have a printer. Why do I have these options? Uh, because you can print to different devices. Print for most people refers to well print something on a piece of paper but in technical uh, term you can print to a document uh, basically the first thing that you can do is of course send by fax now to do that you will need to have hooked up a device that has this capability so you might not be able to fax anything from your computer. Uh, usually you'll have a modem or you'll have um, one of those printers with a, with a fax in it that you can use as a fax. Uh, basically what it will do is simply send the document that you want as if it was a fax to another fax machine for example. Print to PDF is another option and this is of course tells it all. It's simply send your document, whatever you want to print out, a web page uh, document, and it will transfer it in PDF. So this means anybody in Windows 10 can create PDFs. Why would you want a PDF? Well, for example, say you've uh, written a, uh, a Word document. The problem with the Word document is that if you send the Word document, everybody can tweak it, everybody can change it. But if you send a PDF, it kind of locked down the document in a form that nobody will, you know, change. It is a document that you can only basically view. Uh, and it is also a standard that pretty much everybody can view, even if you have um, a smartphone a tablet, PDFs are standard documents that pretty much every device can see. Then you can uh, choose Microsoft XPS Document Writer. What is that? Well, that was a attempt by Microsoft to create their own PDF version, if you want, which is F XPS. It's another form of document, but the problem is it's not really supported much. And uh, frankly, I I think I've never seen somebody really use it. So uh, we can kind of forget this option pretty much and you're better off, you know, sending it to PDF. And then there's Send to OneNote 2016 that might appear for a lot of people. It's simply that it's going to send whatever you want to print out to OneNote so that it can be shared with different devices that you have that all have, of course, OneNote and that basically these documents will sync to together so you can actually view them on every device. Now notice that one of them here, print to PDF, is default. Um, also that you, if you have printers installed, will see your own printer. So for example here, my printers are not installed on this machine. They are installed on another machine. But technically I would see um, a um, Epson R220, I would see a DeskJet 952C, I would see a LaserJet P1505 if all of those were plugged in. You can choose one of these options to be a default. That means if you don't choose anything, that's what it's going to do all the time. 
So every option, everyone, if you manage these devices, you can say this is my default. This is what I want to have as a default. You can also say I want to remove device. For example, fax. I'll remove fax. I don't have that. And uh, I, I won't use that ever. So you can remove what you never want to see. I can remove uh, XPS. I'm never going to use this either. But I might keep PDF, OneNote, because that might be something I'll use. And of course, you'll have your own printers if you have a printer installed here. After that, you said, let Windows manage my default printer. Now, this is off by default. But um, if you turn it on, what it does basically is it remembers what's the last printer you've used and will keep it that way. So say you have more than one printer uh, and you always use your LaserJet. Well, if this is on, usually it will stay with your LaserJet by default because that's the one you use all the time. But if for whatever reason you change for another printer, it will change the default to that printer. Honestly, it's more of an annoying thing than anything else because if you don't look at it and you, you tend to click fast to print things, you're actually going to find yourself printing to the wrong printer. So I would think that this is better when left off because it means that it will always be the same default printer when you print. The other option, download over metered connection. This is off by default also. What that means is simply if you are over a metered connection, your computer knows that it might be, um, it might not be a good idea to download big amounts of data over the internet because it might cost you something. So if you keep this off, it means if you're on a metered connection, say on your cell phone, um, basically what it's going to do, it's not going to download new drivers. So for example, here on the devices that are installed, you won't have new drivers on a metered connection so that it doesn't take uh, amounts of data that you might want to keep preciously for something else. And of course, if it's on, that means it's going to download whatever connection you have, including metered connection. And finally, at the bottom, you have devices and printers. This brings you to the control panel side where you see all the devices and the printers that are installed over your computer and network, multimedia devices, printers, and even all sorts of devices. Like here you see my USB headset. You see that it sees my Linksys router. Uh, here in the middle, media devices, multimedia is all the devices that I've got plugged in that it can view that would be could be used to send, for example, some music and stuff. And so as you continue, you see all the different devices. Uh, it has also the option to add a printer or add a device, a little bit like in the settings. So there's kind of a little duplicate side here. But um, some people are used to using the devices and printers. For example, you know, I, I, I just installed a printer uh, at one of my clients last week. Well, I didn't go here to add the printer. I am used to the good old control panel. So I came here and I click, click the add a printer button instead, because it was for me kind of more natural because that's what I always do. But it's not a bad idea to, you know, learn how to use this setting panel because um, eventually one day the control panel is going to be gone and that day if you've already moved on to the new settings panel, probably going to be easier for you. And finally, you have device manager. And the reason why it brings you to device manager, if you want, because printers and all sorts of devices are hardware, they have drivers, and they can be viewed from this uh, device manager. So for example, your printer is not working. Well, you could check the device manager to see if that printer isn't showing that there's a little something that's not right by showing, for example, a little um, you know yellow triangle saying there's something wrong, or a red X saying hey there's this this doesn't work at all, or the driver's no good, or so on. So it brings you to that page where you could see the status basically of what's working or not. So this is the printers and scanner side of the devices tab or option in Windows setting. 
If you enjoy our videos, please subscribe to our channel. You'll be informed when new videos are online. Give us thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, something you'd like me to talk about, let us know.